Hello, this is Bill Webb, AKA Billy Indiana. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about this little game, Open Ocean. This game is published by Featherstone Games and created by Joel Bodkin. And I actually won this game in an Instagram contest sponsored by Mike and Diane from Merry Meeple People. A great couple, It'd be good if you'd follow them on Instagram, they post some great pictures. And after I won, Joel Bodkin actually reached out and congratulated me, noticed that I was from Indiana and he is also a transplanted Hoosier. Uh, so we had some fun conversation via Instagram messaging too about the game. And I just received it this week and have been playing it solo. So today I wanna to give you just a quick overview of how the game plays and then do a at least partial playthrough of the solo game so you can see how that works. And hopefully that'll be helpful for you. So let's get this game open ocean to the table. Uh -oh. Before I talk about the gameplay for solo play, let me talk to you a little bit about the components. You can see what comes in the box here on the table. Uh, the box is really nice. It's uh, a thick cardboard. It's got a nice magnetic clasp and then uh, space inside for the cards and really nice art inside as well. A nice small box game. There's the front and back. So there's the, the box, but in the box is what's important. <laughs> Uh, and we've got the habitat bonuses, which we'll be explaining here as part of the solo play. And you can use those in solo play or in, in uh, multiplayer uh, games. And then there's ocean events, which is another kind of expansion or option that you can use in the games. There are dolphins, which you don't use in the solo play. Um, I suppose they could be either used or not used in multiplayer games. And if you do use them, but you want a less aggressive form or a less punishing form, I guess, there's the friendly pod dolphin card which means that if a person does acquire three dolphins, they actually get a benefit from it because normally uh, dolphins are used to steal cards from one person's reef and put them in your own. And so when you steal a card from their reef, you give them the dolphin. But if they achieve uh, or receive three dolphins during the game, they actually would end up getting a bonus. So kind of tempers some of that, take that from the, that form of the game. Then there is a fish are friends. There's a shark, uh, multiple shark cards. And if you ever have three shark cards in the ocean, which is the pool of cards that you're taking from, then there's a feeding frenzy and everybody loses their best card, basically. Uh, but you can play a Fisher Friends version where people don't have to discard their best cards during those feeding frenzies that occur when um, three sharks show up in the ocean. And then there's also Crab Rave. Uh, crabs are another kind of a card that's in the deck and it's you can put them in or not. It's uh, one way that you can use them is to help players who are less experienced give them kind of an advantage. I've gone ahead and thrown them in uh, just so you can see how they work and you could always decide whether you want to use them or not. But if there's ever two crabs in the ocean, and really the gameplay is divided into two sections, the ocean where you're drawing the cards from and the reef, which is what you're building. Um, and so if there are ever two crabs in that ocean where you've placed a crab there to take a card, basically, it's kind of like a wild, you can swap something out. Um, then each player will be able to also have the added benefit of moving a fish in the reef to another spot in their own reef. And sometimes that's really handy because you may think you have the perfect spot when you lay it down initially and then later in the game you realize, oh, it would have been better if I had to put it here. So just a couple of alternate forms, uh, expansion kind of forms that you can use in the game, but that aren't really required. Except for solo, you do need these habitat bonuses. The other things that you would need for the game in most cases are these basic tiles or these basic cards. And this is where you'll have the different kinds of coral and anemone and fish and the sharks are in there. And I've also included the crabs in there. There's also turtles in there as well. And we'll talk about what those things do here in a bit. Then you've got the player reference cards. On one side, it kind of gives you the vocabulary and I'll show you a close up of some of these things later. And then on the other side, it just gives you some more um, actions and helps you understand some of the iconography. Then there's the first player red octopus and the second player purple octopus. And it's got a reminder that if you are the first player, you reveal your chosen card first. Normally in a multiplayer game, you, you put down face down the card that you're gonna play. And then the first player shows which one they're gonna put into their reef. And then the second one says at the end of your turn, eliminate one card in the ocean, then replace it with a new card. And so when you play a two player game, it's kind of handy to be able to keep refreshing the ocean a little bit. And that's, I think the function of that second player card so that you are getting some cards taken out of the ocean and other ones put in fresh. And then you've got the six starter coral pieces. And uh, we'll talk again about the iconography and what these pieces mean. And then you've got the rule book here. 
Let me show you a close-up of some of the cards and the icons that you'll see, and then I'll show you the setup of the solo game. These are the three bonuses that I'm trying to achieve to begin with, and they're actually just the top card and a stack of five. So if I'm able to achieve this, I put that in my collection, and then I flip over the one underneath it and start trying to achieve the one underneath it. Same with these two. So they're just the top card in a, in a stack of five each. There's 15 total goals I could be trying to achieve. This one, there's information that says clownfish often live among the poisonous tentacles of an anemone by slowly building up an immunity and a mucus coating which protects them from being stung. And so the information just tells you more about the fish and the anemone. But this shows you the arrangement. Somewhere by my common sea anemone, if I can place the percula clownfish orthogonally to it, I'm gonna earn this bonus, which is in a more than one player game, uh, would be worth four points if you're using those bonuses. In a solo player, just trying to accomplish as many of these goals as you can. And then for this one, it says, regal blue tangs are important for coral health because they eat algae that may otherwise choke coral out due to overgrowth. So again, some science information about the fish and the coral. And if I can get these regal blue tangs somewhere around a pink vase coral in orthogonal arrangement, that's gonna earn me five points. This one shows that butterfly fish are found on coral reefs around the world. They usually travel in pairs, and when they find a partner, they stick together for life. There's copper band butterfly fish, and there's pearly scale butterfly fish. If I can have four butterfly fish in my reef, I'll earn that bonus point. So those are the bonus points, uh, the bonus cards I'm trying to earn. In a multiplayer game, you might have dealt them out two to each player, and they're trying to each uh, um, accomplish their own individual goals. Or you might have them dealt out beside the ocean and everyone's just trying to achieve the same three. In a solo, like I mentioned, I'm trying to earn as many of these as I can out of the stack of 15, just only seeing three at a time. All right, let's look at the other cards. So here in the close-up, you can see I've got my starter coral here, and you can see those little arrows pointing around. I can go in any direction, beside or diagonal. I just can't go below. So if I place this red coral fan connected to it, it could go here because it would be in any of these spaces surrounding it. And then any, any star one can connect to any other star one with, in any of those eight spots surrounding it. And at the bottom, you can see it has the icon with the three little fish, meaning I can that coral can attract little fish. So I've put these cardinal fish here connected to that coral. Um, these have two little fish icons here, meaning that they could attract medium fish. And so this medium fish comes in, and you can see down at the bottom of the medium fish card, it can attract a large fish. It's only got one icon. So all the small fish uh, can attract medium, all the medium can attract large, and you can see what they attract by the icons in the bottom corner, and you can see what kind of fish they are by how many fish are on the card. These are small fish because there's three fish on the card. They attract medium. These are medium fish because there's two fish on the card. They attract large. A large fish could come in, be attracted by that medium fish, and you can see there's no icon on the bottom of the large fish because it doesn't attract any other fish in. So um, the advantage of putting these smaller ones out is you can take an extra action to draw in other fish, but once you get to the top of the food chain, so to speak, uh, those can't attract anything else in. So that gives you a little bit of a close-up of what some of the iconography means and uh, what I was describing there and also the different kinds of coral and fish. So let's get it back to the other up top view and start the game. All right, I've got the table set up for a solo mode, and this is what we call the ocean. This is the collection of cards that we can choose from. And so you can see there are eight cards face up around a pretty tall stack, um, lots and lots of cards in this game, of other coral, anemone, fish, sharks, turtles that are face down that I'll be choosing from, both for my hand and to replenish the ocean. These are the goal cards that we talked about, and so I'll be trying to achieve this sea anemone with the clownfish, uh, the pink vase coral with the blue tang, and then trying to get butterfly fish four in my reef. And then I've got a hand of nine. And so in my hand, I've got uh, a crab card, which again, this is an, a variant, but I've gone ahead and thrown it in to show you how it works. So with the crab card, this icon tells me I can put it into the ocean and I can take any tile back out that I want. Um, so this is nice. That uh, kind of gives me an opportunity to gain tiles. Now I'm not going to use the variant where when there's two in the ocean, I get a benefit. I think that's a little overpowered for a solo game, but uh, I suppose you could do that. But I'm just going to play them 
uh, as wild, so to speak. And then I've got a yellow tang, and then I've got a painted sea anemone, and then I've got a red fan coral, a copper band butterfly fish, which is going to help me achieve this goal, hopefully. And then a shark. Now, a shark, you can see this icon here. Um, it tells me that I can put it into the ocean and I can pull out a fish, but it can't be a coral or an anemone or anything like that or a turtle. It can only be a fish, whereas the crab allows me to pull out any card from the ocean. And the downside, though, is if too many sharks get out here, like we said, if there are three of them out here, a feeding frenzy comes, and then I have to lose my most uh, valuable card, basically my highest point card that's not protected. Now, you can protect your fish with anemone. Any fish that are surrounding an anemone are protected. All right, then I've got a green tube coral, a pink vase coral, which is going to help me with this uh, um, achievement here, this goal, and then another pink vase coral. So now when you play the game Open Ocean, what you're trying to do is build a reef. The storyline is that a typhoon has come through and destroyed the reef, and you're starting with one starter coral and you're building out from there. Now there are placement rules when you um, are putting your tiles or your cards out here. You have this starter coral that is the bottom. It's on the floor of the ocean, so you can only go out like we talked about in the close-up. And so I'm going to have to put a, a single fish or another star card attached to this in one of the spaces around. And then, um, like I showed you with the icons, I can place the other types of fish in sequential order. I'm just going to go ahead and order my cards here. I've got a lot of coral in my hand. Um, and you basically play three rounds. With the nine cards, I'm going to play one. If it has an action, so like I talked about in the close-up of the cards, where I can draw something from the ocean. Looks like I've got my turtle upside down here. Uh, where I can draw something ocean, I'm going to take that action. And then afterwards, I'm going to discard a card from my hand, and I'm going to discard a card uh, from the ocean, and then I keep going. And then I go until all nine cards have been played or discarded, and that's a round, and you play three rounds, and then you count up the points that you earned in your reef based on the numbers that are in the corners of your cards, based on the bonuses that you earn from these achievements over here that you're able to accomplish, and also based on the bonus for having many different colors of coral in your reef. Uh, the more colors of coral you have in your reef, the more points it's worth, and I'll show you that when we do scoring at the end. All right, so I want to get this pink vase coral out there right away because I want to try to achieve this one. So I'm going to put this pink vase coral right here. And because uh, the sun cards can be played diagonally or orthogonally, I'm going to put it right there. And because it can attract small fish, um, I'm going to look up here. I've got these chromus fish and also uh, these coral fish. I could attract either one. Neither one of them really helped me achieve a goal here. Uh, but I'll go ahead and pull these in. Now these, uh, according to the icons like we looked at before, can only be placed orthogonally. So I'm going to put it right there. Um, yeah, put it right there. All right. And then I replace the ocean, or the card that was taken from the ocean, another butterfly fish, so that will help me. And then I'm going to discard a card. And let's see, I've got two of these pink vase ones in here, so I'm going to go ahead and discard that. I don't need two. And I'm going to discard something from the ocean. Um, let's see. There's another pink vase coral there too. Shouldn't need that. So let me discard that. Now I'm down to seven cards and I go to the next round. So as I look through my cards here, um, I could put another coral out. I could put um, a single point triple fish, uh, small fish card out, or I could put a two onto that um, single fish. Now I'd I could also try to school fish if I had the same kind, but I don't have any of the same kind here. So I'm going to go ahead and just see, I've got, I started with yellow elk horn. I'm going to go ahead and put a green tube coral out here. Um, I'm going to just put it right there. Build up some more colors of coral. So now I've got three different colors of coral already. And it can also attract small fish. There are these coral fish out here that are small fish, three on a card. I'm going to put that there, attract it in by that new coral, replenish the sea. And then let's see, in my hand, I've got an anemone. That might be good, although it's a painted anemone. I need a common anemone for that advantage. Um, let's see, I think I'll go ahead and the red sea. There's no red coral out there, and there's no sea anemone. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of the sea anemone for now. I can usually avoid... Um, Shark feeding frenzies in a solo game. So, and then I've already got yellow coral in my reef, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. 
Oh, and there's red. All right. So um, back to my hand. Uh, let's see. I really want to get this fish into here, uh, but I don't have any of the small fish in my hand. So I may just want to continue putting out some different coral. Um, let's see. I'll go ahead and put some fan coral here. Let's just put it this way. Just keep expanding that reef. And there are no... Oh, there is clownfish. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to put the clownfish here. It's a attracted in by this red fan coral, put it here. And then hopefully I can put sea anemone right by that and accomplish that. It's got to find that common sea anemone somewhere. Uh, so let's see. Oh, there it is. Common sea anemone. All right, now I need to discard something. Well, I definitely want to keep the butterfly fish because that's going to help me achieve that, hopefully. And I can do without this one. So I'll go ahead and pass on that one. And then out here in the... Um, in the main thing, I've already got red fan coral in the ocean. I've got red fan coral, so let me discard that. And oh, there's another butterfly fish, another one that could help. All right, so then back to my hand. Okay, this is where the crab advantage comes in. Normally, you can't really pull coral out of the reef unless you have a crab that is basically lets you take any card from the reef and replace it with the crab. Or you could use the turtle effect. And the turtle is one where you redo the whole reef. You discard all the cards out there when you play a turtle card. I don't have one in my hand, so I can't do that this round. But you play the turtle card, you get rid of all eight of them, and then you replace it with eight new ones, and you can take one of the eight that you replaced. And so that's another way where you could pick up some coral from the ocean. Otherwise, you have to have them in your hand to get them into your reef. Um, but the, this allows me to take whatever I want, and I need that sea anemone. So I'm going to take that and replace it with the crab. And then I need to put it uh, by this clownfish so I can achieve that goal. And because this is a sun card and this is a sun card, they can be placed orthogonally or diagonally. And I'm not breaking the rule of going below the floor of the ocean, so I'm going to put it right there, connected diagonally to that coral, and now connected to the clownfish. So I've achieved this goal, a four-point goal. I'll just put those over here on the side. And now I reveal a new goal that I'm going to be striving for. All right, liar tail coral fish. I want to try to get three of them. Well, I already have one out here, so I'm going to be trying to keep my eye on those in the coming rounds. All right, now I need to discard one of mine. I really want to keep these uh, butterfly fish so I can hopefully achieve that. So I'm going to discard the shark. The shark can be handy because it allows me to pull something out of the ocean, but I already have something I want here. And so I'm going to go ahead and discard the shark. And then um, once this crab is out here, it really does me no good. So I'll go ahead and discard that as well. So I'm not playing with that uh, advanced uh, or that alternate play where you can get an advantage. Um, turned over another crab to replace it though, so it didn't really help. And now my last card, I'm trying to get four of these out here. Now this is a two, so I can put this by any ones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put it out here on the edge. I'd like to try to school these together since I know I'm going to be trying to find them anyway. So I'm going to put that one out there on the edge and maybe I can surround these chromus fish with some other butterfly fish. And that is my last play of the first round. And once your hand is empty, uh, the round of one is over. It's a three round game. So I'll take nine cards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, perfect. And then play the second round. So this time I got a turtle, a cardinal fish, a Moorish idol. I got some rainbow coral. I got another shark. I got another butterfly fish, which is good. Uh, let's see, I've got another idol. Moorish idol, um, a common sea anemone, and then another cardinal fish. All right, so I know I want to get those butterfly fish out, so I'm just going to go ahead and begin with that. I'm also going to put this butterfly fish here, and so now I've got two butterfly fish. It's a two, it's feeding on these smaller fish, and it can draw in a larger fish. Let me just move this. Let's put it up here. These are the achievements I've accomplished. Um, it can draw on a larger fish, and I look out here, I'm trying to get these blue ones in here. Let's see, they need to be by this, though. So how about I do this? I'll put this here, still feeding on those chromos fish, and it's going to draw in the regal blue tang, and that's going to allow me to put it here. Oh, sorry, that is not a large fish. That's a two, sorry. So the threes, I have queen angel fish or queen angel fish. All right, so I'll take queen angel fish. Um, and so let's let's go back to the original plan then since I made that mistake. All right, let's put it there and then we're going to add this large fish out here, queen angel fish. And then I replenish the ocean shark. So I don't want three sharks to end up out there. 
All right, so that's my first play of the round. I don't need the common sea enemy anymore because I have that. So I'm going to discard that, and I'll go ahead and discard this shark. Don't want a feeding frenzy. And I go on to my next play. So let's see, I've got in my coral, I've got red, green, yellow, and pink. So this rainbow coral could be nice because um, it would give me yet another color. And none of the other cards in here are particularly important, although actually, uh, since I do want to get that regal blue tang, um, I'm going to go ahead and use my hammerhead shark and see how that works. So I put a shark out here to take a fish. You can only take fish with a shark card. I'm going to put it here because it would be eating on those coral fish, and that puts it by the pink vase coral. So that means I've achieved this card. Um, so another goal achieved, and flip this one over. Okay, this one says I'm going to be trying to get three of those chromos fish. So there's that one. So now I'm trying to build both of those up. All right. And that was my turn. Now, this is a two, so if there was... Oh, there is a three fish out here. So I can. That was my playing a card. I played the shark to put this into my reef. And now it, my action is to draw in a large fish that feeds on the medium fish. It only fits right there. It has to be placed orthogonally. So it fits right there. And that's the first round. I replenished ocean. More regal tangs. Let's see... None of these are particularly helpful for any of my goals right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and discard. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and discard. I got two of these cardinal fish, so discard that one. I'm going to discard the shark that I placed out there. Again, to try to avoid any feeding frenzies. All right. So now, let's see. I'm going to try to keep expanding my coral a bit here so I don't uh, have any issues of running out of ways to play cards in the future. So I'm going to put this rainbow coral here. It also gives me another color of coral. It's touching diagonally to this sea anemone, another sun card. So that's a legal play. So having played the coral, there's no small fish out here to expand, so I really get no action. Now I need to discard. Um, I'm going to go ahead and discard one of these threes. I'd like to keep the one and hopefully draw on some of those two fish. So I'm going to discard that one. Um, I've already got a rainbow coral in my reef, so I'll get rid of that. And there's a coral fish. That's one I'm going to want to want. All right. So let's see. Um, I'm going to play from my hand a one card. It needs to be played by coral. So let's see. I could play it here. And that's going to draw in uh, a two fish. Let's see. I need to bring in some butterfly fish still, so um, actually, let's put this down here by this coral, and as it draws in some butterfly fish, let's draw them, and maybe I can eventually get these connected and school them together. They're not yet, because they have to be connected orthogonally, but maybe they would be able to. So I'll put that there, flip this over. I'm going to discard. I'm going to keep the turtle to show you how that works, so I'll get rid of this Moorish idol. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of uh, the crab. And then this is how the turtle works. Might not be a great choice because now I've got some nice <laughs> coral fish out there that I would want to have in my reef, but just to show you how it works. So we're not necessarily playing for maximum score here. So I've got this turtle, and I'm going to take all these cards and get rid of them. I probably wouldn't do this if I was actually playing the game because I'm getting rid of cards that would be helpful to me. All right, and then I pull out eight new ones. All right, well, actually, those chromies can be good. And there's some purple coral, which I don't have yet. And another butterfly fish. All right. Oh, got some chromies there. Okay, so now I get to choose this, uh, with this turtle, I get to choose um, which of these I want. So um, if I go with coral, I'm going to have a different color of coral. Um, if I go with the chromies, I could try to be achieving this one. Um, I'm going to see, since there's two chromies out there, I'm going to go ahead and try to achieve this one. So let's put this out here. Um, I could put it by uh, these sea anemone and coral here. It's not going to be able to school with those over there anyway. Uh, so we'll put it there. And then the turtle has to go by it. So we'll put it right there. All right. And then I refresh the ocean. Got some yellow tang. And then last round, we'll go ahead and play it real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. 
Okay, so this time I got some clownfish, I got a Moorish idol, another butterfly. I just need to get one more butterfly fish out here. Yellow coral, which I don't need, a crab, which could be helpful, purple coral, which could be helpful, anglefish, don't need the anemone, and purple coral. All right, so that's what I have in my hand. Well, I want to get this butterfly fish out here, so let's see. Um, if we take the butterfly fish, it can feed on smaller fish. Uh, so let's see, let's have it go ahead and feed on the clownfish. And there's no large fish out here to attract, so I don't get an extra action, but that does get me my fourth butterfly fish, which means I've now achieved this one as well. And let's see, this one, if I have a yellow tang and a loggerhead turtle. So if I can get this yellow tang and put it here, that would be advantageous. All right. Uh, so now I need to discard one. Um, I've got two purple coral in my hand, so there's no reason to have that. And since I have one in my hand, I don't need that. Let's flip this over. Uh-oh, two sharks. Um, so I'm going to have to get rid of one of those sharks before we get a feeding frenzy here. And then for my next turn, let's see. Um, let's go ahead and see. Uh, I need to get that chromis out there. The coral isn't really going to help me. So let's go ahead and just do that. I'm going to take this chromis. Um, I'm going to put it down here. And that gives me one two, three, so I've achieved this goal. And I flip over another one. Now if I can get angelfish and Moorish idols, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. I'm on my last round here, but. Um, so that was my card play. Um, I, I played it here by this coral, so I can't actually expand um, to put a two fish. Uh, actually, let's, let's make a change there because it'd be wiser to put it here. Um, and then, Hopefully, I can find another yellow tang here. I'll show you how that would work um, if it comes up. Uh, so let's put that here. All right. Maybe I should have saved that crab for later. Okay, here we go. There's the liar tail coral fish. All right, so uh, now I need to discard. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and discard these clownfish. And let's discard one of these sharks so we don't have a feeding frenzy. All right. And for my next play, let's see. Um, I want to try to get these by this turtle. Um, actually, it looks like I'm probably not going to be able to achieve that. That was my goal, but um, let's see. What can I do here? Sea anemone. Already got some of those. I may want to discard that. Yellow Elkhorn, I've already got some of those. I may want to discard that. Um, Moorish Idol. Let's see. Do I have I have one angelfish, two angelfish. So actually, this Moorish Idol, and I've got another angelfish in my hand. So let's go for that. Maybe we can actually achieve that. I'll put this down here. It has no extra action, so I can't do any extra move, but that gives me now three of these four. Actually, I was closer to it than I thought I was going to be. So um, and then I'm going to discard the anemone, and I'm going to discard out here the shark, and turn over a crab. All right. Uh, for my next play, kind of a similar move here. I'm going to put this, slide this up a little bit, put this right here. So this big fish is going to feed on this butterfly. I'm going to put it here so it's schooled with that. And I could have actually just put it there to make it a school too. Um, and then... That's again a three, so it can't attract anything else in. I'll go ahead and discard this yellow coral since I already have it. And out here, we'll just discard one of these crafts. All right, and then with this coral, I want to put it in a place where I can actually make another play. Um, and I am kind of running out of spot <laughs> room here on the table, but um, so I'll put this here. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's any way I can get this one achieved. Uh, oh, actually, I forgot to take this one. I already did achieve that one last time. Let's see what's underneath it. An angelfish by a yellow elkhorn coral. Well, I have the yellow elkhorn, but I didn't end up getting one of the angelfish by it. Um, I would needed to get three of these, and I only have one out here, so I'm not going to be able to get that. So it looks like uh, the only thing I'm going to be able to do additionally from just planting this coral is just to add um, more fish as points. So... I'll play this coral right here. It does give me another type of up coral in terms of color. I can draw in a small fish from the reef. 
I'll go ahead and pull in these liar tail coral fish. And there we go. And now my cards are played. I could go ahead and restock this, although not really necessary. And that's the end of the game. Now for scoring, we look at all the points in the top corner. So I would add up all of these points in the top corners. Uh, we also look for the number of fish that have schooled. And so I didn't do a very good job of schooling my fish in this game. Uh, the only ones that schooled are these two. So not only would I get six points because this is three and this is three, I would add two more to that because I've got a school of two there. And then I look at the coral. And for the coral, I look to see uh, how many different colors. So I've got purple, rainbow, red, green, yellow, and pink. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I look in the book, it tells me for scoring, uh, we take our base points, the points in the corner, we take our schools, which I only got two points for. The reef bonus though, with six different colors, I get 15 points there. And then my bonus goals, which would be these added up. So then I would add up these goals that I was able to achieve. And so if you're playing in a multiplayer game, that's how you would add up all the points. If you're playing in a solo game, you're really just looking to see how you rank in this little chart here. And you're looking to see how many goals did you achieve. So I got five goals this time. So I'm in the second row for goals. And then I would need to add up all my points here to see how many points I earned. And the combination of how many goals you achieved and how many points you earned tells you were you a level one fringing reef, a level two patch reef, a level three barrier reef, or a level four coral atoll. All right. So that is how you play a solo round of Open Ocean. Hopefully that makes sense and it was helpful for you if you're interested in getting this game and trying it as a solo game. I've played it solo five or six times and played it as a two-player game several times as well. And it's a nice little game. It's pretty quick. Um, it's pretty easy to teach. It was a little bit awkward at the beginning of trying to figure out how to combo the different cards. And I'm still adjusting to that. I'm sure I still missed uh, some great opportunities in this solo playthrough just trying to make sure I was instructing it correctly. Um, so I, I imagine I made some pretty bad strategic choices, but hopefully at least know how the game plays. Well, hopefully that was helpful to you. And if it was, I'd appreciate it if you click on that like button down below. It'd be wonderful if you'd subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get notifications of other videos that I put out, click on that bell icon. If you have some questions for me about the game, please add them to the comments. Or if you've played this game or another game like it and want to share what you like about this game or other ocean-themed games, leave those comments below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching. This is Bill Indiana, signing off. Huh.